Crazy Blue here today. Today we're going to be talking about Infinity Photo on the iPad Pro. What are the pros and cons? Do we like it? Is it any good? Stay tuned and we're going to look at it. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're going to be looking at Infinity Photo on the iPad Pro. Now, last week, I showed you guys Infinity Photo on the desktop, and if you want to see that video, you can look at it right here. This week, we're going to look at how it is on the iPad Pro. Is it worth picking up? It is $20 on the App Store. I will leave a link down below. I'm running on an iPad Pro 12.9 inches. This is first generation. Works great. It basically works with every iPad. You will get more of an advantage if you have the iPad that will work with the Apple Pencil, which the iPad Pro does as you could see okay so just like last week instead of me rambling on and talking I'm gonna show you a real-world workflow doing one of my thumbnails for YouTube which was for last week's episode because I filmed these ahead of time and I'm gonna set up that photo on the iPad so let's get over to my workbench and take a look at it shall we this is the best way for me to use infinity photo and show you how it looks on the iPad I'm sorry I don't have any other way of showing you this I could record the screen but I want you to see my hand gestures and things that I'm doing and how I'm working so you guys can get a feel for what infinity photo is like so the first thing we do is we're gonna open up infinity photo and it opens up like this these are all your projects right here now the way you import is you can import you just click on the plus symbol and you can import right from here you can import from camera you can import from the cloud that's the best way to do it or you can create a new project file today I'm gonna to show you how I do my thumbnail the first thing I want to tell you guys the first thing that I noticed that infinity photo doesn't do which is really frustrating if I go to my cloud and I try to open up one of my photos taken by my Canon camera, it will not work. So the CR2 files, if I open one of those up, I get this error message, which says it won't work. It shows up here and it still fails to open and gives me all this gubbly gook and says it's not supported. And now it's a Canon file. This is supposed to be a professional app. So that really just grind my gears. So I'm going to delete that. Let's go back to what I wanted to show you in the other aspects. But I really hope Infinity Photo does fix this. It's a common raw photo file. So especially if you're a Canon user, I don't know why that's not being used. So let's go to the plus symbol. Let's go to cloud. That's the easiest way to get in here. We'll go to Google Drive and we'll go to Thumbnails. And I converted this over to a JPEG. I did it actually in Infinity Photo on the desktop, which opens them up fine, and transferred it over as a JPEG, which it's this image right here. So we're going to import this image and we're going to let it do its thing. And it's a huge image. It's okay, so there I am. There's my goofy ass face again. What I want to show you here is I'm making a thumbnail and I'm going to select me out. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is a Little different than Infinity Photo. You actually have across the top here different personas, they call them. We're gonna go to the selection one right here. I'm gonna go to the paintbrush select tool right here, and I'm going to select me. So let's see, how big is this brush? Oh, we're in subtract. We want to go to add. All your tools get opened up right down here. So we want to go to add and we'll see what size the brush is. Yeah, it's too small. So let's raise that up a little bit so you can see the brush in the middle of the screen as you as you raise it so I'm gonna put it right about there and I'm just gonna go in here and gently select my hand okay I'm gonna select everything of me and we're just doing a rough select right now and I just want to show you right off the bat when you saw I got down here it moved this out of the way so as soon as you go to select it moves stuff out of the way and you could do that by tapping up here in this corner right here and now for gestures and is you could zoom, you can now we can zoom in. You could use your your finger, oh, no, double tap guys to undo, and you could use two fingers to move around. So two fingers to undo, and then two fingers to zoom and move around, push and pull. So that's what I'm doing right here. So I'm gonna push and pull. It's a very natural way of working. I like it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and add some more to this. I'm gonna lower this, and I gotta say I really do like cleaning up and selecting on my iPad. For me, it's what I've always wanted. What I always pictured the future would be when I was in graphic design back in like the 90s. I mean, the future, we're gonna just touch the screen. We're gonna draw right on it. So I think we're kind of there. Oh, and then we're gonna go to add because we're gonna go right here. If you forget at any point what the tools do, you can click on this question mark right here. And we're gonna do that and it, if you let up, 
and you click on it, but it shows you all the different personas, basically gives you the names of everything. All right, so we're gonna go to the Refine Select tool. We're gonna click on that, and I really like this because now it paints everything orange for you, and that's the parts that are supposedly garbage. So I'm gonna change it to overlay. I'm gonna change the width of my brush. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. I'm gonna try and go through selections. So let's see if we can get See if it can refine that area just a little bit better. All right, I think that's pretty good. It should get most of it. We're gonna do new mask, new mask with layers. So you click on this and you can click what you want the selection to output to. So I'm gonna do a new mask with layer and I'm gonna hit the check mark. All right, so there we go. And now where your layers are, guys, this is the beauty part of this. I, this is why I love this program. But all your layers are right here. So you have your mask with your layer. You have the original background. It keeps that one in there for some reason. I don't know why it does, but it does. And now we're going to add a new layer. So And they call it a pixel layer. So we're going to bring it down. And you click and you hold. And you bring it behind it. So we're going to bring it behind it there. And then we're going to go back to photo persona, which is right here. So we change personas. Now we're going to go to the paint bucket. And I'm going to pick the color color of red and I'm just gonna tap the screen and fill that in so I like to put red in the background if you want to get rid of that you just tap it again and that's how I select myself out and I think that was a really fast select and if you zoom in it did a pretty good job even though I have a really small hairline but it got around it pretty good and now what we're gonna do is we we'll do some of it, some adjustments and some photo touch up so let's do that real quick so just to show you by the way you do have history here which is awesome it keeps track of all your history navigation change the rotation if you want to rotate it you can unlock it transform so you can change the shape and everything filters and that's where I want to go I want to go into adjustments I want to adjust brightness and contrast because I'm not feeling the brightness in this image so let's do that as soon as I clicked on it we got this down here so let's do brightness and contrast let's see let's, let's just add that. that that looks good name of the preset all right and there's the preset now I don't want it to affect my background color I just want it to affect the original pixel color so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here into layers and there's your contrast and brightness and I don't want it to affect the red behind it I just want it to affect this layer so we're gonna click and we're gonna put it in there so that way it doesn't affect the background let's get rid of my moles all right, we're gonna use the clone tool, and these are the presets down here. I'm gonna click with my finger, and I'm gonna pick an area. I'm gonna go right there, and I'm gonna start painting. And that didn't really work out, so let's go over here. Try to make that fade in. That looks good. That looks like it's part of the shadow that shouldn't be there. All right, and we'll click over here. Two finger tap to undo. Okay, so that's just a quick look at just quick touch-ups that you could do. You can import from other projects, and it saves right there when you exit out of that. And just to show you again how I did that, you hit the arrow right up here, boom, you're out, and now you're back into your one area. So now what I want to do is I want to import another file that I created on the computer. It was actually originally a Photoshop file, and this does open up Photoshop files as well. But this is my background, and the way I'm going to import this into my background this was one of the questions that I had is I'm gonna grab me I'm gonna grab this layer I'm gonna go to the move tool I'm gonna select me so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen hold down on it and then hit you see the copy I'm gonna hit copy and then we're gonna go back to the arrow right here and then we're gonna go into this this is my thumbnail and I'm gonna tap again and paste and now you're not gonna see it because it's way bigger let's see yeah it's way bigger there let's go to layer put me behind the borders we're gonna click and put me right there now if you want to select multiple layers you could also like let's say I wanted to move all these layers you could just swipe and that selects the other layer or if you just want to select that layer you could do that I think it's awesome for the iPad but I think it's an odd workflow coming from a desktop you have the iPad version and you have the desktop version so they're a little different so it's kind of a weird workflow it works it definitely works I definitely like it but it has quite a few differences it's like using a completely different program in some cases all right so the only other thing I wanted to show you real quick is you can put in type and just like in the last one I showed you you just can click and drag and then you can type in whatever you want. I'm just 
messing around. And in here as well, we're gonna move this. Let's go back to the move tool. You can adjust all your text right here. We could do that and you could change everything or we could just click, we could just click on it and then readjust it that way. I'll just bring it over here. And I'm just gonna show you real quick with the text, what you could do. And you know, it's really great for adjusting really quick. And I'm just, you know, I'm just messing around. And then effects are right here. So we could put on all your different types of effects that you would want. Glow, stroke, 3D effect, emboss. I'm gonna put a stroke on it real quick. An outline in this case. So outline, intensity, pixels. I will change the color to black. I don't know why my blend mode was different, but it was. So there you go, just to show you. Put a nice stroke on it and... All right, so what we wanna do now is the biggest problem I had was exporting and importing. So I just wanna show you real quick, you can export. So let's export this selection area and project. Let's say I wanna work on my desktop. We can go to export. And I would highly recommend, I wouldn't do PSD if you're gonna go back to the desktop. If for some reason it keeps changing the text to, it just flattens out and rasterizes the text. I don't know if it's maybe something I'm doing wrong or something with the program. It's kind of peeing me off in that aspect. But if you want, you could you could export it out as a GIF, JPEG, you know, PDF, you know, PNG, whatever you want to export it out. I'm gonna hit cancel. And I'm gonna save this out as, you can't just save it because it'll just save it to the machine. What we wanna do is, and this work is a little frustrating, which you'll get used to it but you want to actually save copy so that way you can go back to your drive and we're gonna make an inf infinity photo and you can make it save history uh, I don't really do that but we're gonna hit save saving copy and now it'll give you a place to, to put it so now I'm gonna put it in my Google Drive and I'm gonna put it in YouTube thumbnails and I'm gonna hit add I don't know why they have it as add but and now it's exporting out on that and now I can pick up from my desktop if I want so you have your tablet experience you can edit and draw and do whatever you need in this aspect and then go back to the desktop okay that was a quick look at infinity photo on the iPad Pro let me know what you guys think in the comments down below just to give you guys an idea of what that thumbnail is is gonna look like because I'm gonna do it completely on the iPad Pro here's a little sample of what it looked like so you guys can get an idea of the workflow like I said I feel like we're living in the future with that I love the fact that I could touch and I do think there's room for improvement and you know I gotta give credit where credits due. Photoshop hasn't done anything like this yet but infinity photo they took the bull by the horns and they did it already so it's pretty impressive I think it's gonna get better it's only $20 you can catch it on sale I quote it on sale because they'll do a sale every once in a while and I got it for $15 totally well worth it some of the imports some of the tools are a little clunky I haven't played with it enough but if I had to rate it right now guys I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a four out of five because there were that import in that file you know that really upset me that I couldn't just import that file and be able to use it but it's not a deal breaker and there's little hang-ups here and there because it's the interface is different from Infinity Photo a little bit and you have to go through different personas and I get why they did that because it is an iPad touch screen kind of thing so you have to kind of tailor it more to an app instead of an actual desktop program but I think they got I think they nailed it I, I mean that's that's my opinion I think they nailed it in that aspect I think it could be always be improved I mean everything can so that's that's my opinion on it you know take it for what it is I've only been playing with it for like two weeks that's it for me guys if you like this video please like and subscribe and remember you can do anything if you put your mind to it later guys stupidest design ever I know what you're thinking crazy wills tech shows over what do I do now Real simple guys, you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button and then you check out my other videos. It's not over. I made a lot. It's been a good year. <laughs>